Okay, so my name is Farah. I am a PhD student, and I will be presenting today um, CWL Prov, Retrospective Provenance Capture uh, for CWL Workflows. My co-authors are Stian, um, sadly he cannot be here. Uh, Michael, uh, Richard, and Andrew, my supervisors. I'm in um, uh, University of Melbourne uh, and in last year of my PhD. So uh, let's, uh, let's start with some, um, some key concepts. I know this is, um, everyone at BOSC knows about workflows, so I'm not going to spend much time on this, but just to remind you what we're talking about here uh, after coffee, okay? So workflows, how, uh, how are they designed and how are they run? Uh, workflows, this is the basic definition, which is um, from 2000 and Lodashar article. Um, this is an example workflow on your, uh, let me, yeah, on, on this side of the screen is an example workflow. In my uh, language, in my definition, I would say uh, the, the automated uh, serialization of tasks put together to achieve the desired outcome is something you call workflow. No matter what you use, no matter how you do it, it's called workflow. So it has nothing to do with the underlying system. Um, how are workflows designed and run? Here's where your workflow definition approaches and your workflow systems come into play. Um, it looked simple. If you look at this workflow, it's very simple, very, um, it, everything seems very fairy tale here, right? Uh, how are workflows designed and run? Short answer in many, many different ways. Long answer. Uh, full list, incomplete list contained 215 different approaches in which you can define your workflow, in which you can design your workflow. This list is available on Common Workflow uh, Language GitHub repository, and I'm sure every group who is uh, doing a review of workflow management systems and review of workflow definition approaches will have their own list overlapping, uh, but uh, still with the new entries, and uh, this is an incomplete list. So you can imagine the challenge of interoperability and portability um, of the workflows from one system going from one system to the other system. So, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, in our previous studies, we actually divided um, these all um, amazing workflow uh, definition approaches into three, these three broad categories in order to um, simplify our life, uh, to ex conduct some experiments and to see which one are we going to, um, uh, which, one, which one is best for, um, or which one is better or suitable for declarative nature. Uh, so this is what we did. We uh, divided them into three categories, domain-specific pre-built pipelines, GUI-based uh, integrative workbenches, and some standardized declarative approaches. Uh, we tested all these, and in the end, we came up with the conclusion that the declarative approaches are going to let you uh, declare everything. They are going to force you to uh, declare everything and not make any internal implicit ex um, assumptions about, uh, about the requirements and about the underlying software that are required. So um, uh, this was a previous study. The DOI link is available over there if you are more interested. But let's move to um, what we are doing here today. Uh, why are we using workflows? The old scripts were fine, everything was fine. Why are we using workflows? Um, this is a uh, slide. Uh, I actually adapted it from um, my co-author Stian's <coughs> presentation. It shows you the four basic, um, four basic characteristics or four basic properties that a workflow can provide you uh, and independent steps cannot provide you. Automation, scaling, abstraction, and provenance. Each of these topics are so vast and so uh, you can spend um, another 15 minutes on each of these topics. What we are today interested in is that if you are using workflows, uh, you should be able to track the provenance of the workflow, and you should be able to provide that to your user uh, in the end. So that's uh, so we are talking about the provenance reporting today. Provenance, what is provenance? So let's actually go find out what provenance is. Um, this is a formal definition of provenance, um, the scary one, the formal one, which... Uh, which you will read and you will understand and you might not understand because uh, everyone is not working with provenance. Uh, uh, so so what, what I call provenance is it's a story, of, a story that you tell of how something came into being. So if I give you a data, I have to tell you a story of how that data product was made. If I give you a database <coughs> entry, for instance, I should tell you how this entry was actually produced. So this is a story of who did this analysis how this analysis was done, when this analysis happened, what was used in order to achieve this desired outcome. So all this information, all this historical view, as far as you can go back in history, is called provenance. That's the easy definition, and uh, this would be the formal definition. I put the formal definitions up because to, to be grammatically and uh, politically correct. 
so when I talk about provenance, provenance is a very old concept. It's associated with the databases, associated with the artworks, associated with, uh, it, 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 it actually dates back to 16th century or something. What we are interested in today is provenance for workflows. And provenance for workflows is specifically when you run a workflow, you actually capture all the essential details in order to tell someone what happened. That is called retrospective provenance. I will be using this keyword again and again during the presentation, so it's better we can actually establish what a retrospective provenance means. So it means the detailed record of the implementation of a computational task. It includes the details of every executed process put together uh, with the comprehensive information about the execution environment and everything. That's a formal definition. Not so boring. All the details associated with a workflow run. Don't worry, we have a definition for that and we have a whole list of what the retrospective provenance should include. This is not an exhaustive list and it can include more things. Um, anything that you need um, to understand a workflow run is going to be part of workflow retrospective provenance. So it could be analysis environment, it could be your underlying OS dependencies, it could be your um, attribution details, it could be domain specific at, um, details, file formats, all those kind of things, output data, input data, intermediate results, anything that you think can help the user understand your experiment in a better way is part of retrospective provenance. So these are the basic concepts that we needed to get our head around before we can move and uh, move to the rest of the talk. Um, uh, so we did an experiment. We found out uh, that um, the least number of, of assumptions are made by declarative approaches. After that, we went back to literature what other people are saying you know, to validate our results. So what other people were saying is you read and you see, you learn from their experiences. So. Um, these are some best, behind me are some best practice recommendations given by um, different authors from 2010 onwards, 2012, for workflow publishing and sharing. So if you can read it, uh, everyone kind of agrees on kind of similar things, should be treated as first class data objects, complete provenance capture should be provided, uh, system neutral language should be um, used to describe your experiment, uh, underlying associated software should be available, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, the purpose of showing you um, these, these recommendations is that we actually used these in combination with our own experiments to come up with some levels of details that you should provide to your user. So let's go and have a look at those levels. So this is the, this is, um, the, these are the levels of details that you can provide. And on the, this is right side, right? Yeah. On the right side, you have some, um, some tick marks. This is what you can achieve at each level, right? Lowest level would be you, you, you don't really care about if someone can run your analysis and you just give here. Here's, here's what I used. Do whatever you want to do with it. Make it rerunnable. Spend a day, spend a month. I don't care, right? That's the lowest you could do. And that would be your workflow specification, your tool specification. This was the input setting that I used. You don't care about the environment. You don't care about anything. You just provide that, right? As, as, as a tick box. How can the user use it? He can use it to, um, to, to debug your program. He can use it to, uh, to, do, to, to interpret your results better. So it's like, okay, he has these results based on these input parameters, right? And, he can, and you are actually establishing some trustworthiness by sharing these information. You're saying, I'm making these claims on based of these methods that I actually used. So that, that's the lowest level that you could do. A one level up, you care about rerunning as well. You care about giving this information uh, in an executable format to your user, okay? That would be a level up. So in that case, you're going to make efforts to make your analysis uh, rerunnable for others, okay? The third level would be, you, there are no black boxes in your workflow. Every step, if it refers to another workflow, you are giving complete information about that workflow as well. So that would be your third level in which nothing is black box. Every step is explicitly mentioned, explicitly stated. Now until here, when I talk about um, these levels, these are not levels which are associated just with bioinformatics workflows. These can be applied to any scientific workflow. After that, you can achieve the highest level of uh, annotation, highest level of method sharing, highest level of understandability by including your domain specific annotations in it. You include your file formats in it, you include your, um, all the description, you include your hypothesis in your, uh, in your description, you include what's the purpose of the experiment. So these are the subjective things that you, you opt to provide to the user in order to understand 
your analysis in a better way. So these are the levels of the reproducibility, levels of provenance, level of method sharing that you can do as you go from the lowest, set, uh, lowest level of the pyramid to the highest level. So after establishing these levels, then keeping in view the best practices, defined level, we came up with CWO Prov. We designed it, that, and it's a format for representation of a CWO work workflow run and its retrospective provenance. So let's see what it looks like. So it's using all these things. So I am, by training, not a software engineer, so I don't like building new things, so I'm reusing everything. So these, everything that you see on this slide, it's all built by community, and it's there, but they are, they are like their own ecosystems. They're not combined together. So I'm trying to combine all these standards together to create a format for method sharing that's going to help you understand method across different systems. So these all standards were chosen. I'll show you why. So for workflow specification, we chose common workflow language. Um, principles are interoperable, portable, um, reproducible. Uh, for provenance recording, we used prov model, WF prov, WF desk. I did not come up with these. W3C, um, World, World Wide Web Consortium, and some other groups, they came up with these, and they are established um, standards, so I'm just reusing these standards. And for provenance, um, uh, I use these, and for workflow specification, I use common workflow language, and together, we are annotating these resources, and we are aggregating these resources with the manifest file in a research object, which is following a bagged format. Big words I'm throwing, um, because well, why? Because if I go into details of each and every one of them, they're on, on their own a big presentation. So um, if you're interested, we can have a chat later. So uh, all everything combined in a research object, why these standards? That would be an important question, because there are like many, many, many different ontologies and standards. Why these? Because they were taking some check boxes for me and for our group and for community. Interoperable, open source, community driven, domain neutral. Solution that I sh I pr I'm proposing here should not be domain specific. It should be, if you're from astrophysics, you should be able to actually um, mold it to your, your field. If you're from chemistry, you should be, I mean, this conference is bioinformatics, so I'm hoping the domain would be bioinformatics as well, right? But these are the checkpoints that are important. Um, you, uh, uh, if whenever you choose something, whenever you choose a standard, whenever you choose an ontology, just make sure they, they're open source and they're, um, they're, they're interoperable, they're community driven, they're domain neutral, so that you can actually mold them into um, anything you want. Um, uh, on top is a, is a proverb, I really like it, reuse vocabularies, <coughs> preferably the standard ones. So that's also from W3C website, I just like it, so it's here. After finalizing the choice of standards, the choice of ontologies, building up the whole, um, um, whole um, what we need to do, uh, we actually uh, uh, define the file structure of the research object itself. So you remember the pyramid diagram? I think I should have added it here, but let's actually see. Uh, file structure of the CWL prov research object should contain these four subdirectories. Uh, and it is containing these four subdirectories in our implementation. Um, data folder or data directory should contain all the input and output data checksums. So not, uh, there isn't anything, uh, anything, um, anything absolute. Uh, everything should be relative in this directory so that uh, you, you can make your workflow be runnable. Uh, in the checksums could be anything. You can use any hash algorithm um, and based on what your syst underlying system is using. Uh, the snapshot is uh, the historical view of the original workflow and or original job files that you might have used. Uh, this, work f uh, this folder is not rerunnable, right? Because these might contain absolute paths to your um, desktop, to your cluster, to whatever you're using. So this is not rerunnable. We made um, the workflow rerunnable in the workflow directory. So if I give you my research object, if you go to your workflow directory, uh, you should be able to rerun the workflow using any implementation of CWR. That was the goal. So that's how we designed it. Uh, and in metadata, you have provenance about the workflow run, provide the manifest file that uh, includes all the detail of what is uh, included in this research object itself. So coming up with this file structure was also something which was not, uh, which was uh, essential because this is how you can actually um, uh, mention, uh, you, can f you can format your methods in a better way. Uh, then we designed a sample provenance profile. Uh, looks very scary, looks painty. 
uh, but um, I promise in the end um, it turns out to be good. Uh, so every provenance profile is using these notations and these namespaces and all, uh, I think I should use this. Yeah, these are the namespaces that the provenance profile is using to refer to these uh, attributes to these details which are uh, uh, kind of common for every workflow. So for example, execution engine, uh, workflow run, pro process run, input data, and all these things are very common. They are like, um, they're not, nothing, nothing, um, nothing very specific to CWL workflow even. But you can, you can adopt this uh, provenance profile for, for your system, if, even uh, if you're using some different workflow system, right? So this provenance profile is going to give you, a, uh, give you information about who did it, when this happened, what was used in order to achieve this, uh, this process. So um, we design an example profile, and after that, we tried to, uh, try to implement this, uh, and we actually uh, had to choose a reference implementation. The first step was to choose a feature-complete reference implementation. Obvious choice was CWL tool. It could, uh, uh, so then we actually chose that, and then this is a process diagram for recording provenance. So that, that happens when you run your workflow with um, dash dash provenance, uh, and you, the only input we, use, uh, we want from the user would be the research object um, name. So you give your research object name, your usual CWL workflow, your usual job file, and, and you run it, and the CWL tool is going to capture uh, all the details that I told you, the provenance profile, it is going to generate a research object with um, the designated directory structure, and it is going to hand you, in addition to the output files, uh, before you would get output files, now you would get an output file uh, encapsulated, aggregated with all these metadata and information in a research object, <coughs> such that, uh, if you are using a different implementation, you should be able to take my research object and run it using your implementation. So that's the goal. Um, so process diagram for recording provenance is this. Um, these were the two formats that we, uh, that we used in order to define the, pro uh, in order to, these are the serializations that we use for provenance. There are six other serialization, um, serializations. Um, nothing fancy about um, using this one and not that one. Uh, the reason for using the top one was it's really, you know, semi-human readable as well. So if you want to have a quick look, and if you want to see what went wrong, and, uh, uh, and, and you want to debug your program, you can do it using the first, uh, first serialization. Okay, I'm just left with one minute, okay? Cool. Uh, so that's, uh, that's the overall structure uh, of how things should, uh, should work. So your input files, and um, I think I'm not going to go into details of this, uh, this is on my poster as well in the evening. So if you come by, I'll explain it because this is the detail. Let's actually go to how can CWL Prov help you. So this is important, right? Um, automated capture of methods and data, how can it help you? It helps you achieve effective sharing. Happy collaborators, happy prayers, happy community. It helps you, if you don't care about sharing, you should, but if you don't, then you should think about analyzing, reusing your own workflow a few months down the road or a few years later. Future you will be happy with you if you have this standard representation of the methods. And publishing standardized method along with publications and manuscript submission uh, will make reviewer, editor, and uh, end user, and reader very happy. So happy community is a, um, we, can, we can promote research if community is happy. Uh, the second thing is when you get provenance, uh, you actually establish um, some trust, right? So you know how you got this data product, so you are trusting the data trustworthiness and uh, you can actually go back and verify someone's result uh, of if they are saying this is, is, is correct. Okay, so this is a prop model that we are using. Uh, I've explained it in the beginning, three, three, diff three main, uh, main, main categories of this one. Uh, is everything perfect? All problems solved? Unicorns exist? No, they don't. Uh, like every project, we are also in continuous um, uh, iterative process of improvements and updates. That is why I'm here, uh, because we will be here for the next four days, so we can uh, use as much feedback as possible from you guys. Uh, big, um, so in, if you look at this diagram, uh, until level two, we have achieved everything. We are still left with level three, and that's what we are uh, trying to achieve now. Just to give you a status of the project. Um, okay, a big shout out to Nextflow. They are also uh, doing a research object implementation for Nextflow uh, and during a Google Summer of Code, uh, which is kind of um, a, a, a big thing because um, they are also doing the provenance similar way as we are doing. So um, yeah. 
Uh, and then we are here for feedback. Your feedback matters because you are the stakeholder at the end of the day. Um, and uh, um, any questions? Thanks for the talk.